Hey guys, and once again, welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Adaptive Sync display technologies from both Nvidia and AMD have been available on the market for several years now. Initially, Nvidia's G-Sync and AMD's FreeSync differed quite differently in their implementation and user experience. But now that both technologies and ecosystems have matured, I figured it's a good opportunity to revisit G-Sync and FreeSync to see where the differences currently lie in 2017. FreeSync uses the Visa Adaptive Sync standard, a component of DisplayPort 1.2a, along with a variety of off the shelf display scalers that support Adaptive Sync. G Sync uses a proprietary model from Nvidia in place of the usual display scaler, though it also communicates over DisplayPort. The proprietary module, along with the closed nature of the G Sync platform, makes it more expensive to implement than FreeSync, which I'll explore in more detail a bit later in this video. Both G-Sync and FreeSync provide the key features of Adaptive Sync, but due to their differences in their implementation, there are some differences in additional features provided by each technology. As G-Sync monitors use a proprietary scalar module, most displays are limited to just DisplayPort and HDMI for connectivity, with only DisplayPort supporting Adaptive Sync. FreeSync, on the other hand, uses standard display scalers, so FreeSync monitors often have many more connectivity options than their G-Sync counterparts, including multiple HDMI ports and legacy connectors such as DVI and even VGA. FreeSync has another connectivity advantage through a feature called FreeSync over HDMI. As the name suggests, AMD has managed to get Adaptive Sync working over standard HDMI connectors and cables, provided both the GPU and monitor support the feature. There are a few benefits to running Adaptive Sync over HDMI rather than DisplayPort, primarily the fact that HDMI cables are much cheaper than DisplayPort cables, and devices with limited room for ports such as laptops can use the more widely adopted HDMI standard for compatibility with other displays without losing support for Adaptive Sync. G-Sync's proprietary module does give it some advantages though. G-Sync continually tweaks monitor overdrive on the fly to eliminate ghosting wherever possible, which has been shown previously to improve ghosting performance compared to FreeSync displays. Driver and monitor tweaks over the past few years have improved FreeSync displays in this regard though. Nvidia has integrated a feature called Ultra Low Motion Blur or ULMB into every G-Sync monitor as well, which strobes the backlight in sync with the display's refresh rate to reduce motion blur and improve clarity in high motion situations. The feature works at high fixed refresh rates, typically at or above 85Hz, though it does come with a small brightness reduction. The main downside to ULMB is that it can't be used in conjunction with G-Sync. In other words, you need to choose between variable refresh rates without stuttering and tearing, or high clarity and low motion blur. Most people will prefer to use G-Sync for the smoothness it provides, while eSports enthusiasts will love ULMB for its responsiveness and clarity at the expense of tearing. Again, this is a feature that does not have an equivalence in the FreeSync implementation. Low frame rate compensation, or LFC, is another point of difference between G-Sync and FreeSync. Every adaptive sync monitor has a refresh rate window, for example, 30 to 144 Hz, within which the refresh rate can dynamically adjust to the GPU's render rate. What happens between 0 Hz and the display's minimum refresh rate, 30 Hz in the case of my example, is determined by whether the monitor supports LFC. Monitors that do support LFC duplicate frames and refresh rates when frame rates are below the display's minimum to ensure variable refresh continues to function below the minimum. For example, when 20 FPS gameplay is played on a 30 to 144 Hz adaptive sync monitor with LFC, every frame is duplicated and the monitor operates at 40 Hz within its refresh window. Monitors without LFC would run at 30 Hz with either tearing or stuttering depending on the V-Sync setting due to it running at 20 FPS and not 30. LFC is extremely important on monitors with high minimum refresh rates such as 48 Hz. LFC on these sorts of monitors allows the variable refresh window to extend into the crucial 30 to 48 Hz zone and function as if the monitor has no minimum refresh rate. Without LFC on these monitors, there is a jarring effect when frame rates fluctuate in the 40 to 55 FPS zone as variable refresh is continually activating and deactivating at the 48 FPS boundary. So LFC is crucial for the best adaptive sync experience. 
Every G-Sync monitor comes with support for LFC, so when buying a G-Sync display, it's not something you have to worry about. FreeSync is a different story, as only some monitors, mostly high-end monitors, support LFC. You'll need to consult AMD's display list to check whether a FreeSync monitor on your radar supports LFC, whereas it's already a known quantity with every G-Sync display. Some of the initial teething issues with both adaptive sync technologies have been resolved since its initial launch. V-Sync works the same in both FreeSync and G-Sync, with V-Sync controls only affecting how frames are displayed outside the variable refresh window. Borderless window gaming with adaptive sync is also supported now by both FreeSync and G-Sync, although AMD's implementation appears to be a bit dodgy in some situations. As for graphics card support, that remains the same with both FreeSync and G-Sync. FreeSync requires a Sea Islands Radeon RX 200 series card from 2013 or newer, while G-Sync requires a Kepler GeForce 600 series card from 2012 or newer. G-Sync doesn't work with AMD graphics cards and FreeSync doesn't work on Nvidia graphics cards, as has always been the case. The main takeaway from looking at a range of G-Sync and FreeSync displays is that G-Sync is a known quantity, whereas FreeSync monitors vary significantly in quality. Basically, every G-Sync monitor is a high-end unit with gaming suitable features, a large refresh window, support for LFC and ULMB. In other words, when purchasing a G-Sync monitor, you can be sure you're getting the best variable refresh experience and a great monitor in general. With FreeSync, some monitors are gaming focused with high-end features and support for LFC, but many aren't and are more geared towards everyday office usage than gaming. Potential buyers will need to research FreeSync monitors more than with G-Sync equivalents to ensure that they're getting a good monitor with all the features necessary for the best variable refresh experience. Pricing is one of the most contentious issues with FreeSync versus G-Sync, as Nvidia charges a hefty premium for the use of their proprietary module. I've researched a bunch of near identical FreeSync and G-Sync monitors to examine their price differences and here are the results. Looking at near identical monitors from the same manufacturer, G-Sync adds exactly 200 US dollars in most cases to the MSRP over the FreeSync model. When looking across brands, the margin can be as low as $100, but it often hovers near that same $200 mark. For the six monitor types I researched, the average price difference when looking at the most similar models was $188 US. Two of the G-Sync models could be overclocked using the on-screen display beyond what the equivalent FreeSync model was capable of, which adds a bit of value to the premium price you're paying. For the most part though, you're only getting the aforementioned benefits of G-Sync like ULMB, LFC, and of course, adaptive sync compatibility with Nvidia graphics cards. FreeSync monitors are universally cheaper, though one of the six monitors I examined, the Acer H277HK, did not support LFC due to its limited refresh rate windows. New adaptive sync monitors are set to hit the market in the coming months, which harness some new additions to the FreeSync and G-Sync ecosystems. G-Sync is expanding its feature set to include support for HDR monitors and wide color gamuts. HDR monitors with G-Sync will support all its key features like ULMB and LFC, though they will also include far larger gamuts and higher brightness for HDR functionality. Drivers will seamlessly switch between an SDR environment for desktop work and HDR in supported applications where appropriate. FreeSync 2 is a much larger update that not only includes support for HDR monitors, but also introduces a monitor validation scheme that will see only the best monitors given a FreeSync 2 badge. FreeSync 2 monitors will have at least twice the maximum brightness and color volume over standard sRGB displays, and monitors will be validated to ensure they meet input lag standards in the few millisecond range according to AMD. All FreeSync 2 models will also support LFC. FreeSync 2 will include similar features to G-Sync HDR as well, like support for larger gamuts, higher brightness, and automatic switching between SDR and HDR modes. There's still no word on whether AMD will charge a premium for FreeSync 2 validation and branding, though the updated technology will bring FreeSync closer to what G-Sync provides in every monitor. So there's a lot of information to take in about the differences between FreeSync and G-Sync. I still think most people will be making a purchasing decision for their monitor based on the graphics card that they have in their system. Of course, AMD users will buy FreeSync monitors, Nvidia users will buy G-Sync monitors, but it's always nice to know the differences between the two ecosystems, to know exactly what you're getting, and you know, it might influence some people's purchasing decisions. You never quite know. Anyway, that's it for this little look at FreeSync and G-Sync. Again, I hope you guys learned something from this video, and we'll catch you in the next one.